Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to make a read-only form in Microsoft Access. I'm gonna show the beginners how to do it, and then I'm gonna show a little trick for the advanced developer students. All right, so a little bit of something for everybody in this video. Today's question, I hear this all the time, but I got an email from one of my Platinum members, Tessa from Tacoma, Washington. She said, how do I make it so users can view information in a form but not change anything? All right, there are a couple different ways to do this. Let me show you my favorite method. All right, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I got a customer list and the customer list will take you to a customer form. Now, let's say you don't want users being able to change things in here. All right, just you. All right, everybody else just can look stuff up. And yes, I've had situations where this was the case. The, se the main secretary entered all the data in and everybody else in the office could just look up stuff. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is make a copy of this form. Why? Well, because we still want to have a copy available that we can work with ourselves. So I'm going to take customer F. I'm going to go copy paste. That's control C, control V. We're going to call it customer F uh, and then just full or whatever. So you got a backup copy of your full form. Okay. Now let's go into design view on the customer form. Okay. And then we're going to open up the form properties right here. Double click on that little box where the rulers meet, go over to data and you're looking for three properties. You're going to change. Okay. Allow additions that allows them to add new records. If you want them to be able to add new stuff, that's fine too. A lot of offices, they want users to, okay. It's okay. If you add a new customer, but you can't change existing data, right? Allow deletions, that's a big one. Don't want customers getting deleted. And then allow edits right here allows changes to the record. So you turn all three of those things off, save it, close it, close it. Now open it and you'll see in here, I'm typing and nothing is happening, right? And I can't go to a new blank record and I can't select this and hit delete. Nothing happens there either. So this is effectively locked down. Well, now, how do you edit anything? Well, you can come into your customer full form here, right? Just don't give them access to get to this. All right, you can hide the navigation pane if you want to. I cover how to do that in my simple security video. Go watch this one. That'll show you how to lock it down so your, your average access user can't get in and find it. I mean, if someone you know like me really knows access, sure, we can get around it, but this will keep 99% of people out of it. And another thing I like to do in here is if you got fields that they can't access, I like to just make them gray, right? So just go to format and then pick like a light gray, right? I like that one there. And that just kind of visually tells them, hey, you can't change that stuff. Okay, now, what if you do want them to be able to change certain fields, but not some fields? Like they can change some things. Like maybe they can change, they can change the notes, they can add things there. Maybe they can change first name, last name, but they can't change the rest of the fields. So you can do that too. Here's how you do that. First, turn allow edits back on because if that's off, they can't do anything. Okay, so now, uh, you know, they can't add, they can't delete and they can edit. So now we can change certain fields to allow them to edit them. So let's say we want to allow them to edit first name, last name and notes, that's it. Everything else is locked, okay? There's a property called locked, but it's a field level property. So what you do is select all the fields that you want to lock. Let's just start with this group here. Find locked and set that to yes. And at the same time, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna also make them gray. All right, so those fields there are now locked. We can do these ones over here too, right? Locked, yes. Make those gray too, right? There we go. And maybe even this is active box up here. Let's lock that. And you can't really set that gray because it's a, it's a checkbox. Okay, but now the user can also visually see what they're allowed to change, all right? Save it, control S, save it, close it, close it, open it. Now I can't come in here and change their phone number, but I can come in here and change their last name or add some notes, see? But these fields are all locked. All right, so you gotta allow edits, but then you can lock the fields. And again, you got, you know, two different forms running here, one for you, where you can come in here, the full one and change anything you want, and one for them. You just give them the button that you want on the main menu. 
And then if you want to add stuff, you have to go into your unlocked database and just come in here, right? Okay, now that's the beginner method. Now I'm gonna show the advanced students how you can do the same thing using one form. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this customer F, the one that we just modified. All right, and I'm going to re or let's just copy this guy back. Copy, paste, customer F. This is my original customer form, the way I had it before. Okay, now what we can do is we can have it so that it's normally locked, but the manager can enter a password to unlock it. Okay, so let's go into the customer form here, design view. And let's go back in here and set allow, we'll leave allow additions, yes, allow deletions, no, and allow edits, we'll set to no. Okay, and then we're gonna make a button in here that's gonna turn that stuff back off. So I'm gonna copy paste, and we're gonna go in here, and then we're gonna put in edit. This will put you into edit mode, right? Make the name of the button, edit mode. Okay, so now at this point, if you open up this form, everything is locked and you can't delete anything. All right, click on edit, nothing happens yet because we didn't put any code in the button yet, but we're gonna do that right now. So right click, design view, right click on this guy, go to build event. This will bring up my VBA editor. If you get a little window that asks you what editor you want, say you want the code builder, okay? And if you don't know how to program in VBA just yet and you want to learn how, go watch this video. I'll put a link down below. It's free. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started with VBA. All right. So once I'm in here, if you click the edit mode button, right, we can say me dot allow deletions equals true and me dot allow edits equals true. We already made me dot allow additions true. And then I'll put a beep after that. All right, that'll indicate that manager mode is now active. So watch this now. If I can close this, save it, open it. If I try to modify something, I can't. But if I click edit, there's my beep. Now I just change those settings and now I can come in here and make some changes. Okay, but how do I keep the average user from clicking that edit button? Well, we can put a little password in here using input box. I can say if input box enter the password, that's my prompt, right? And then the title of the box will be just password. Okay, if input box equals, and then in quotes, whatever you want your password to be. Let's say uh, Rick is the password. Okay, if it equals Rick, then do this stuff, right? So we'll get rid of these blank lines here. Oh, come here, what'd I do? Doot, doot. And then we'll tab that over, and then we'll put an end if, right? So if if they enter the right password, which is Rick, then that stuff will happen. Otherwise, nothing happens. Okay, save it, close it, close it, open it. And now I'm typing, typing, oh, can't do stuff. Let me hit edit. Oh, what's the password? Oh, I don't know. I'll hit okay. And I still can't edit stuff. Oh, that's not, okay, let's try it again. Edit, I'll put in uh, something, something, something. Hit okay. No, still can't do stuff. All right, let's try one more time. Edit, okay, I'll put in Rick. Oh, there's the beep. I heard the beep this time. And now I can do stuff. So now we know our button is working. And that's it. See, four little lines of code. And I was able to add some really cool functionality to my database. And that, folks, is the power of learning VBA. You don't have to become a programmer, a developer overnight. You can just learn these little tiny, cool little tricks to make your database really have some extra cool added functionality. That's why I like to push people into VBA as much as I can. Not because I'm trying to create developers, but it's just little stuff you can do to make your databases really cool. And these are the kind of little tips and tricks I try to put into my videos and my courses. I got lots more to learn on my website. Check it out. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. 
Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.